Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I have something really interesting to talk to you guys about. These are all the strange things that I've seen while doing van life. Now some of these things are just the average everyday run-of-the-mill stuff that you just might not expect whenever you start van life but some of it you're gonna want to know before you get on the road. Sometimes you'll go to wide open spaces like this and you'll say, ooh, I want to park by this tree right here. But something strange that I've seen is that once someone parks, the next person automatically feels like that's the best place to park. So they want to park right beside them. Now, sometimes they can go well, but sometimes not so much. And let me explain. Sometimes that's fine because somebody's pulling in and they don't know where they're supposed to park. And so they'll pull in beside you because they know if you're there and you haven't had to move, then they don't have to move. But then sometimes some people just don't want to feel alone. And that can lead to some like iffy situations. The strangest thing that I've ever seen is I pulled up into literally a hundred acres of open area. There were no trees. There was nothing exciting. I parked pretty far to the back and then I understood somebody might pull in toward the back but again we're on like a hundred acres they pulled up literally feet within my van and that can be kind of a weird feeling because on one hand you're like okay um there's all this space at the same time you have to understand that just because there's space doesn't mean that people aren't free to park where they want because you know you don't own the land so it's kind of a weird position but then you kind of also have to think of it from a safety perspective especially if you're traveling solo do you feel comfortable then and uh, do you want to get out of your vehicle if there's a stranger next to you again there's nothing you can do about it if somebody does that other than you physically moving because you don't really have the right to tell them to move and sometimes it is just people looking for companionship but sometimes there are more nefarious reasons for them to pull up so knowing if you feel safe is a really big deal but i've always thought that was kind of strange now another weird thing that's kind of strange is the weather you never know what to expect whenever you're in your van in fact today i woke up and it's it's chilly and windy uh it's been in the 90s for the rest of the week so it's kind of strange but this kind of weather isn't the only kind of weather I'm talking about. I have encountered fluke hail. I have encountered tornadoes. I have had snow come out of nowhere. And uh, well, on this particular morning, I was in the desert. It had been hot all week. There was no estimation whatsoever for rain. And um, this happened. It just goes to show that even if you prepare, sometimes the world around you laughs and gives you something a little strange. You know, something else strange that you might encounter that I personally have encountered are disputes around the campsites. In fact, when you're in an area like the area I'm about to show you, you're camping around a whole bunch of, in reality, strangers. So you never really know what they bring to the campsite. Now I've seen this several times where people get into it just super randomly and it bleeds over into your campsite because you can hear it. But um, today, this one was really scary. This guy threatened the other guy with a gun.
Okay guys, let's talk about the next one. There's a really big misconception about van life and it's kind of interesting. So whenever you pull into BLM land or a big huge chunk of land, that's all open space. Now, unless it's something that you have to pay for, in which case that is definitely a designated space. However, I've noticed, especially whenever I go to like Quartzsite or something, um, they have groups that will take over a piece of land basically and call it theirs. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you're gonna be staying there, you can stay for up to 14 days, but this is not that. This is very different. It kind of, let me explain. Typically when people pull into a campsite and they have a place that they're gonna stay for like 14 days, they may leave that campsite or put up like a, a tent to save their spot, so to speak, and that's fine. That's not what this is about. This is about the people who pull out full on cones and string and rope off a section. And you can't even drive through that section because they have it roped off for their specific group. Now, this is not okay. This is not how the rules read and you're not supposed to do this. And there is something to the fact that people need to be considerate if someone's camping and, and not just go through their camp. But if you are set up and you have blocked off an entire section for your group and you have ropes and strings in a public parking area, that's not okay, guys. And I've seen it a lot. I've seen it in a lot of places. Now, again, there's there's one thing if you're setting up like a perimeter so your dog can't pass through that and it's just your individual small site. But once you start blocking off large chunks of land for your group together, that becomes a little bit of a gray area. Now, you guys might remember a couple of years ago, I went to the first Schooly Palooza that I'd ever been to and they asked us to leave and in doing so, a lot of people had a lot of things to say about that, but I researched it and the BLM has specific rules about gatherings of people. And if you have over a certain amount of people, you're required to have certain things like trash and places for them to use the restroom and also some way for um, there to be accountability for that space. And so when you start to assemble these larger groups of these private gatherings on public land, you kind of start to fall into those categories. So the best way to not do that is to not block off your space. However, if you do block off your space, you're basically opening yourself up for those rules. And if you're not following those rules, that can mean a fine or just one of your neighbors getting really irritated that you blocked off a public like thoroughfare of space and um, it's gonna cause some drama. And uh, again, I I've seen that a lot. Now, something else crazy that I've seen is people who are doing builds, specifically those that you watch, and they're like telling you where everything is in their van, like every single thing. Now, I am all about a good tour. However, one of the things that you don't need to do is tell me where your security items are or where the things that are the most expensive are in your van. For example, dad here is putting together a van and I'm gonna show you guys what all that looks like through a tour whenever it's finished, but I'm not gonna tell you where he keeps his unmentionables or he keeps his security items or what those security items are. And the reason for that is because when you do that, what happens is a person could then have knowledge, especially if your van is marked with branding or logos as to what you have, where you have it, and if you go to grab that, they're already going to be ahead of the curve and know where it is. So instead, whenever you're doing your van build, um, keep a few things secret. The other thing that I don't understand that's also a little strange is whenever you're watching various people and they're like, I have this and it's something super helpful, but they're not willing to share how you could get it also. Gatekeeping good stuff is never good. For example, this fridge right here, I know for a fact is gonna be awesome and it's a fridge freezer. So of course I shared it with you guys because I thought you might be interested in it. Now, even if it's something small and mundane, if there's something that's useful and somebody's gatekeeping it, why? It makes zero sense. 
Now something I was never expecting whenever I started van life was that when you pull into a campsite, you see all of these flags. In fact, the funniest story that I have of all of the things that I have done with my van, you, you guys know my van, it's a tiny, tiny van. I had somebody ask me if I wanted a flagpole and I was like, where would I put it? My van is so small. But I started to realize this is more and more of a trend. And as you go to places, you will see a variety of flags and typically you can see them in every direction. Now, some of these flags are just like the American flag. Some of them are like racing flags. People even have their own custom flags with their name on them. And so um, it's just one of those strange things that you never know is there until, you know, you're in the thick of it. And other weird things that I've seen, right behind us there's something that it looks like it's on fire. And this is more common than I ever thought it would be. I found that a lot of people will either have something that malfunctions and it causes a fire, like whenever I was in Colorado, I saw that someone's RV had blown up as a result of something that had happened and it set the forest on fire. There wasn't anything that I could do about it, I was just in the area, so I was just kind of having to deal with it. Here, whatever's going on over here, big huge fire too. But you know, as I said, this isn't as uncommon as you might think. And while we were kind of going around, we also noticed this guy. So here's a weird one. Something super strange that I've seen in van life is elitism. I never thought in a million years that what kind of van that I selected would indicate what social structure that I would fit into. But to some people, that is how it works. Older vans and newer vans sometimes do not coexist. Now, I think everyone can coexist. and I think we all should just be friendly out in the great outdoors because we're all basically in the same situation sharing it together. However, sometimes your van selection can dictate who is willing to be around you. And it's absolutely silly. I don't understand it and it's very strange, but I have noticed that whenever people are circling the wagons, sometimes you can definitely see whenever somebody values the size of a rig versus the quality of the content inside a person. Now the last thing that I think is kind of strange about van life sometimes is maximalist versus minimalist. Now everyone has the right to build out their space however they want and I've seen some really cool rigs that are very minimalistic and some that are very maximalist. So um, it really is like a personal preference thing. But the strange part isn't that it's a personal preference or even how you decide to design your rig. It's that people will judge you based on your level of what you put in your van. And usually that comes from like when people are there, they're like looking around, kind of comparing, getting ideas of their own or just wanting to see what's inside. And uh, based on if you have certain items, they have a running checklist in their head on if you are right or wrong. And I think that's crazy because again, there's no one way to van life and I say that here all the time. So whether you're a maximalist or a minimalist, it doesn't really matter but for some reason sometimes people seem to prioritize one over the other and they want to really go back to that elitist mentality that we talked about earlier where they think that it's better or worse to be one or the other when neither is really right or wrong. So uh yeah. I hope this is helpful to you guys. These are just the strange things that I've seen along the way and some of the things that just leave you kind of scratching your head and don't make sense. You know, you never know what to expect whenever you get in your van and go someplace and well, these are the, some of the things that you might encounter. Now, not all of these are gonna be bad or a game changer or a deal breaker or even something that even matters to most of us. But um, in some cases, the strange things just kind of leave you going Hmm. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And uh, if you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.